Hello everyone, my name is Manish Gupta and in this video I'm going to talk about Big Bench, a new benchmark. The name of the benchmark is Beyond the Imitation Game Benchmark. Uh, there have been several benchmarks in uh, NLP in today's world, right? Uh, there has been Glue, Super Glue, X Glue, Extreme, Extreme R and so on, several benchmarks. Many of these benchmarks have been restricted in scope largely targeting uh, only a single or a few capabilities on which language models are anyway known to be doing good. Right? Uh, that is one problem. The second problem of these existing benchmarks is that they tend to uh, uh, have a very low shelf life in the sense, uh, for example, consider the superglue benchmark. It was uh, proposed somewhere in around uh, July 2019 and by January 2021, we already have models which can surpass human baselines. So superhuman performance was sort of achieved within 18 months after it was actually produced. Uh, the, uh, so uh, and super glue, by the way, was a revised version of glue, right? So so, so benchmarks, existing benchmarks uh, uh, are often either discontinued or they are replaced or extended through inclusion of more challenging benchmarks. That is another limitation in some ways. And third, the costs and challenges associated with human data labeling that is required to gather data for these benchmarks is significantly large, which basically implies that the difficulty of the chosen tasks is, is, is relatively lesser. So uh, try to, trying to avoid those limitations, uh, folks proposed this uh, uh, benchmark called as Big Bench uh, very recently, June 2022. It consists of 204 tasks, uh, a large number of tasks, and uh, more importantly, contributed by more than 400 authors across 132 institutions. So it is a massive collaborative effort. Uh, there is also a shorter version of this benchmark uh, or a lighter version of this benchmark called as Bing Bench Lite BBL, which consists of 24 tasks and sort of intended for lightweight evaluation. Um, the source code uh, related to this task is actually put up on GitHub uh, for evaluation of, of, of various tasks, right? The code is all on GitHub. Um, um, the big bench, essentially the benchmark focuses on tasks that are believed to be not very easy to solve. They are sort of complex and they are beyond the capabilities of current language models. They were contributed uh, by, uh, by, by adding tasks uh, using GitHub pull request. So whoever wants to add a task, there's a template, you know, you can do a GitHub pull request, get it reviewed, and if everything looks good, it becomes a part of the benchmark. It's a live benchmark from that sense, right? So the task topics are sort of very diverse. Uh, given that there are 204 tasks, the topics are essentially from linguistics, childhood development, maths, common sense reasoning, you name it, there's several topics, and we'll see a word cloud soon as well, right? Um, so, um, and uh, in this particular paper on Big Bench, uh, the original, the, the initial paper on Big Bench, the authors essentially provided um, evaluation of behavior across uh, various kinds of models, including uh, OpenAI's GPT, uh, Google's internal uh, internal uh, uh, dense transformer models, also Google's internal switch uh, style, uh, switch transformer style sparse models, and also as results on the pathways language model, PALM. So um, uh, th this is a word cloud which basically shows the keywords commonly associated with these big bench tasks in the benchmark. So there are common sense reasoning tasks, free response tasks, logical reasoning tasks, reading comprehension tasks, some math related tasks, analog analogical reasoning tasks, um, question answering tasks, and so on. Uh, also, if you look at uh, uh, this histogram, you know, there are uh, most of the tasks basically have about 1000 examples close to that, but then the order of the number of examples differ varies from uh, a, a few tens to a few millions. So, uh, so, so there are tasks of different kinds of data set sizes. 80% of the tasks are JSON tasks, meaning uh, there is a JSON file which talks about the inputs and the targets manually curated, right? Well, 20% of the tasks are programmatic in nature where you could vary things, vary inputs by uh, writing uh, scripts in Python. Uh, a subset of the tasks, about 24 tasks, are a part of a benchmark, uh, the, a smaller benchmark called as Bing Bench Lite. And these are a set of 24 tasks which are a part of this simple benchmark. They are all, uh, um, this subset contains all JSON tasks, which, yeah, which can be evaluated cheaply. So thus it is a light benchmark. Now, one of the important findings on, uh, you know, by uh, by learning models on top of uh, this these benchmark tasks uh, is that aggregate performance on this benchmark improves with increasing model size. So experiments were done with different size of models. Uh, you know, uh, the A picture shows effective parameter count from uh, 
10 million to um, to 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 100 100 billion, right? And what you observe is that uh, uh, the uh, accuracy, uh, you know, broadly called accuracy, but you know, uh, normalized metric across various tasks in some ways sort of increases as you increase the size of the model. But then, uh, if you look at uh, average human accuracy or even the best human accuracy, it is nowhere close. So even the best tasks, even the best models lead to mm, and a normalized accuracy of around 15 or so, which is too poor, right? Uh, also, if you look at these uh, things in parentheses, they indicate uh, uh, few short, few short count. So essentially, zero indicates zero short count, and then one, two, three indicate few short count. So as you observe from these pictures, uh, the second picture is on JSON tasks. Remember the 80% of the tasks in the benchmark, and this one is on big bench light uh, benchmark, right? So as you observe across all of these, um, the accuracy does improve with the higher increasing short count. But again, the accuracy remains way poorer compared to uh, compared to the human accuracies. Uh, another thing, to, another thing to observe is that most of these models lead to more or less similar accuracies. But the sparse models, uh, the uh, big G sparse models, which are uh, essentially um, uh, sparse transformer based models, they more or less uh, lead to better results uh, compared to uh, the norms, the dense ones, the dense ones. So the models that were experimented with include big G, big G sparse, GPT-3, and also the pathways language model. Uh, Big G model is uh, tra uh, trained at Google, and it consists of 13 tens decoder-only transformer models trained on a very large corpus, um, very diverse corpus as well, uh, from a data type perspective, from from perspective of types of documents. But then, well, uh, and and the corpus is pretty large, three billion documents. But then, mostly it is English only, with only six percent non-English text, which basically means that these models don't do so well um, on multilingual uh, tasks. Big G sparse is essentially trained on the same data set. However, it is uh, sparse activated expert models, uh, similar to mixture of experts in the architecture. Uh, they have 32 experts where uh, the routing mechanism sends each token to two top two experts. Right, So it's not switch exactly, it's top two experts, but yeah, it's, uh, it's 32 experts. Yeah. So that's that. Uh, GPT-3 uh, uh, family of models has also been experimented with. So eight dense decoder-only uh, transformer models trained on OpenAI data set with 300 billion tokens. Um, and, and the models vary in size from 125 million to 175 billion uh, as non-embedding parameters to be trained. Okay. So um, as we see from these plots, so these are plots, uh, uh, this is uh, performance on uh, multiple choice uh, tasks. And as you see, What also matters for critical use cases is uh, uh, is uh, um, uh, is that the model is not assigning high confidence to wrong answers, right? And that's called calibration. So uh, Briar score is a nice way of uh, measuring calibration. So it's a measure of calibration given a squared error between uh, the model assigned probabilities and zero one targets across classes. So what is observed is that language models make poorly calibrated predictions, unfortunately. But the calibration improves as the models become larger. So that's that. So, you know, as you see in the picture B and picture C, as the models are becoming larger from left to right, you see that the Briar score and the expected calibration error are reducing. Both of them, Briar score and expected calibration error, are errors. It's good to see them decreasing over, over uh, uh, as, as you increase the size of the model. Um, also, what you see from these pictures is that uh, whether you use GPT or Big G or Big G sparse, right? Uh, you observe that uh, across different parameter counts, so across different size of models, um, the uh, the the behavior is more or less the same across model classes. So it doesn't differ much. Right? The cross entropy more or less remains the same. Of course, it drops as you increase the model size, but then it doesn't matter whether you use GPT, Big G, or Big G sparse. However, uh, slightly, if you observe, uh, the, uh, the, the sparse models are somewhat better compared to the non-sparse models. So Big G sparse is slightly better compared to Big G, uh, but then more or less uh, model performance is similar across the model classes uh, as, uh, and, and, and it becomes better as the uh, parameter count increases. Okay. Uh, the other thing to be studied, uh, nicely studied in this uh, uh, benchmark paper is about linearity and breakthroughness. So on some tasks, the model performance improves reliably with scale. So you know when the scale improves, the model become larger. You expect the uh, accuracy to improve for the task, but then that doesn't happen exactly for every task, right? So in the picture A, what you see is some tasks where 
the accuracy does improve linearly with increasing the size of model, right? And these are the best models where the accuracy improves the most with the increase in the model size. So this is measured using a metric that they, these guys call as linearity, right? Uh, interestingly, in some cases, as the model size increases, the accuracy decreases, right? Which is uh, unintuitive, but that happens for some of those tasks. The other interesting metric is breakthroughness. So the idea is that for some of those tasks, uh, in uh, you know, until a particular size, the model accuracy just does not move at all. I mean, it just doesn't improve much. But then at a particular breakthrough point, at a particular critical point, uh, there is a breakthrough, and suddenly the model accuracy shoots up for these tasks. And uh, these are the top few tasks where the breakthroughness factor is super high. Yeah. So what is observed is that these high linearity tasks are typically tasks that rely on knowledge and simple text manipulations. They're typically easier tasks, depend on rote learning and simple text manipulations. But high breakthroughness tasks are typically tasks that require uh, logical reasoning, multiple steps of logical reasoning, sequential steps of logical reasoning. They also require several distinct skills or multiple uh, discrete steps uh, in order to come up with the correct uh, final answer. So that's that. Uh, breakthrough behavior, in some ways, can be can be can be compared to the aha moments that uh, people have uh, when uh, when we have sudden understanding all at once, right? So that's that's the comparison that you can have with breakthrough moments uh, that these models face. But then you can actually also uh, delve a little deeper. So this is basically these breakthrough moments are observed when you consider normalized score as the metric. But hey, if you really care about another metric, let's say if you care about log likelihood per character you observe that even these breakthrough tasks, seemingly breakthrough tasks, are not breakthrough, right? I mean, these curves are pretty smooth as you increase the model size. In fact, it was observed on one of those tasks, emoji movie tasks, um, where, uh, uh, where the model is asked to guess a movie given a sequence of emojis, and then exact string match score is used so as the main metric for the task. There you observe breakthrough behavior. However, if you basically uh, you know look at another metric uh, like um, uh, you know multiple choice metric, uh, then you observe uh, that the that there is no breakthrough uh, seemingly from the variation in parameter count versus the accuracy versus multiple choice accuracy. Yeah. So the conclusion from this kind of behavior is that uh, capabilities and trajectories across the scale of language models. You know, when you go from small language models to large language models are very subjective subjective in nature uh, uh, then we then we think i mean you know then we think they are so they're pretty subjective uh, different choices in task design different metrics can make you feel uh, as if there's a breakthrough or make you feel as if uh, things are sort of gradually increasing or stagnating usually no single metric really uh, can quantify this task solving ability uh, that humans have in general and uh, can be encoded in these tasks it's also it's sort of always uh, important to check the model outputs rather than depending on on one metric as such. Yeah. Uh, interestingly, even large models are brittle. Is what uh, is is another observation. So by brittle we mean that they're sensitive uh, to the precise uh, phrasing of the input. Right. So all of these are remember decoder only models. So if you uh, consider uh, this simple task, uh, this is basically simple arithmetic JSON multiple choice task. So here the question, uh, you know, this is a few short task, few short way of presenting the task, uh, one short in, in some senses. Uh, it's presented as question five plus two equal to option four, option seven, option three, option six. So four options are presented and the bot is supposed to, the model is supposed to come up with an answer seven. Similarly, if you give four plus nine equal to option three, six, 13 and four, you expect it to come up with 13 as the answer. Interestingly, it is observed that models do substantially better, whatever scale you consider, right? Models do substantially better without choices. Interestingly, the accuracy is poorer with choices. Now that's so unintuitive. Uh, models seem to be very, very brittle in this case. It's sort of intuitive that if you give options, the problem should be easier to solve, therefore accuracy should be better, but it turns out not, right? It turns out that if you don't give options, the accuracy is better, okay? Uh, next, uh, let's talk about social bias. So people observed, unfortunately, that as the models get larger, uh, bias often increases, and uh, specifically for broad or ambiguous context. So if the context is uh, very, very pinpointed, well, the bias seems to decrease a little, but uh, with increase in scale of the models, but then across several tasks and across several attributes of bias, like gender, religion, race, ethnicity, nationality, people have observed that uh, 
bias in general increases with the uh, broad or ambiguous context. So remember here the bias score is, uh, you know, the lower means higher bias. So or the higher score basically means lower bias. So so in general, the bias is increasing as the model size is increasing on the on the x axis. Uh, however, the good news is that uh, bias can potentially be steered towards uh, appropriate uh, uh, towards towards less bias kind of a scenario by appropriately choosing the prompting. So if you use uh, reasonable prompts, good prompts, right? In general, you can actually have models with less bias. In fact, um, uh, you know, if, if 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 the prompts were not being bothered too much at larger scales, uh, a 20, 128 billion parameter model finds it over 22 times more likely that a white boy will grow up to be a good doctor than uh, that a Native American girl. So this is more like a gender and a, you know a, a race ethnicity kind of bias combined together. Uh, but that is what you observe. I mean, at at large scale models, and this is a big concern, right? I mean, if large scale models uh, people don't do appropriate prompt engineering and just use them straight off. You actually observe higher amounts of bias in these large scale models compared to small scale ones. Um, so better prompt engineering is what is required to avoid such things. This is one of those tasks in the benchmark and I just wanted to quickly talk about it. It's checkmate in one task. So the task is that you're given some chess position, of course, encoded as a, a text string. So uh, and, and the point is that you have to find a checkmate in one move. Right. So the so the so the input is as follows. The input context in the following chess position: find a checkmate in one move, and then you give like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, is five, six different moves. Right. So then seventh is the move that 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 the that the model is supposed to predict. Now, of course, the target here is NF6, right? So NF6 uh, and the hash basically just says that yes, uh, it indicates a checkmate. Now, unfortunately, large models seem to, uh, uh, you know, uh, whether the model is large or small, as you see in this picture, you know, the model does not seem to perform reasonably at all. So the orange one is correct moves, and well, unfortunately, the accuracy is poor, pathetic, right? Uh, however, what is observed is that as the model size increases, the model is at least able to learn what are legal moves versus not, right? So, which is good news, basically, at least it is learning something about the rules of the game, which is nice. Also, what is observed is that as the models are getting larger, there are situations where the model is able to come up with uh, moves that can potentially lead to checkmates, but it is not able to understand that uh, it has recognized a checkmate and therefore it continues to generate more moves, which is bad, right? So um, uh, the they, they, uh, larger models do output uh, legal moves and they do output checkmate moves sometimes but again you know the the accuracy is poor and pathetic even in that case right um so this is how complex these tasks are and uh, it will be nice to see in the future where the field of nlp moves uh, so as to be able to solve these complex tasks then so summary in this video i talked about uh, uh, the big bench benchmark. Uh, I gave a, a very broad overview of the benchmark. You are really motivated to look at their GitHub page to essentially see the exact tasks that are there as part of the benchmark. Right? We talked about the model performance uh, across scale, and we observed that model performance and calibration both improve with scale, but are poor in absolute terms compared to human accuracies. Right? Uh, performance is remarkably similar across model classes, but with the sparse transformers, the performance improves a little. Uh, tasks that improve gradually and predictably commonly involve a uh, large uh, rote learning or a memorization component. However, tasks that exhibit breakthrough behaviors essentially uh, involve multiple logical steps of reasoning. However, breakthrough is a very subjective definition, and if you change the metric, then you may not see that breakthrough. That's also another thing that we observe, and therefore it's always good to look at predictions and more and more examples rather than just uh, making uh, uh, making claims uh, based on based on some uh, some matrix. Uh, lastly, what is concerning is that social bias is actually increasing, especially if the context is pretty broad and the models are becoming larger and larger. But then the good news is that yes, uh, better prompt engineering may be able to uh, you know has has been shown to be able to avoid uh, generating biased outputs. Okay. So hopefully you like the video. Thanks for watching. Uh, connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage.